Uh, I will try to share my screen. I'm not sure I will be successful. Don't worry, we, we can share it for you. Okay, you, you can share it. Yeah, we can share it for you. I no don't know what's happening. I have a lot of computers here, so. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. We will share it for you and then yeah, you great. only have to say necessary slides. But this is not mine, yeah. So just one moment, let us. There you are. So. No, Maybe. this is I don't see I don't see my presentation. One minute. Maybe I will can. I don't know. No, it's not mine. <laughs> yes, one moment. One second. Do you see now my presentation? We have it there. This is, yeah, we can this see is, the presentation. You can see that. Yes. Okay, I will try maybe. to. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yes, it's okay. This is my presentation. So, uh, good day from Croatia, from Zagreb. Uh, my name is Ksenia Tipek and I work in Creation Ministry of Finance Tax Administration. Uh, so uh, my topic for today and the topic that I really like is uh, uh, use of uh, blockchain technology by tax administration. Uh, we can talk about the VAT and fraud avoidance. Uh, and I will start the EU directions. So I think it's very important that European Union actually, uh, I'm sure it will be, uh, will be start to be a real leader in this um, area. So we see the EU directions, uh, which are say that blockchain and technology have Great improvements to citizens. They enable from decentralized, trusted, transparent, and user centric digital services. This can lead to new and improved business models benefiting society and growth. This is uh, policy uh, uh, for blockchain, among others, urgency to address trends. This includes issues of artificial intelligence, blockchain technologies, and ensuring a high level of data protection, digital rights, and ethical standards. This is from European. Council meeting from October 2017 conclusions. So we see that, um, and if we include that, uh, many uh, different um, bodies, I will say, in, uh, in the European Union, as uh, for example, European Blockchain uh, Partnership, uh, Croatia is all, also in this partnership. Uh, we see uh, this is New technologies, especially okay, special technologies. So we see, for example, today in Mika proposal that there is a distributed ledger technology. So, uh, technologies, uh, new technologies are very important in the digital era uh, we uh, live and work. And um, 
and the needs of tax administrations. So this is certainly real time data information. So uh, sometimes uh, after uh, payment of tax advisors, we need data. So uh, first of all, we have uh, two goals to collect the taxes timely and of course uh, to be a good uh, services, to provide good services and quality services to the taxpayers. So, a real time it is very important for us and authorities and state in another context. Because if we look at uh, today in the field of tax fraud, the tax of frauds are very, uh, very and so we have to be ready for that. However, the decision is we live in digital era, so it's something that's very important. So every tax administration uh, has some level of digitization, and of course, it was a very helpful tool, especially uh, and it is uh, actually uh, uh, till today uh, in this global pandemic situation. Uh, work as, uh, as we do. So, one thing that we need, so we don't like in any of our um, uh, data warehouse, so every test has uh, a large amount of data, so we don't need uh, to out, so data quality is very important level of data security also. So we see today that uh, we have to protect this, uh, this data. Data immutability is another thing. Uh, so, Senia, uh, excuse me, could you please switch off the camera? Maybe we can hear you better without the camera because apparently the, the connection is weak and maybe without the camera we can hear you more clearly. Uh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no problem. It's not your problem. It's, it's the so connection uh, sometimes. I, I just cannot do this because I share my screen. So if I do that, I will lose my screen. So uh, I will be a little bit louder. Maybe you will hear me better. Maybe without the camera, we can hear you better. Uh, just a minute. So do you hear me now better? Better, perfect, now perfect. Uh, okay, thank you. So, uh, as I say, um, this is the strategic aims and needs of tax administration. So, timely prevention of tax fraud, of course, this is one of our primary goals. Reducing the administrative burden on taxpayers and redu reducing costs for both taxpayers and tax administrations. Quality is services for the taxpayers. We see how important it is today uh, to, uh, uh, to provide the quality services uh, from the tax administration to the taxpayers. I think that uh, that is uh, really something uh, in the area of reducing the administrative uh, burden on the taxpayers. Increasing tax compliance is also the goal. Pro Processes automation is something that is also very important. So, for example, in Croatia, we have the uh, automatic VAT refund system, so without any manual work. And uh, error minimization and, of course, transparency. And that is other strategic aims and, uh, aims and needs of tax administration, but I emphasize uh, this that uh, is most important. So, if you look at the blockchain features, every blockchain is a distributed ledger, but not every distributed ledger is a blockchain. Each of these concepts requires decentralization and consensus among nodes. However, the blockchain organizes data in blocks and updates uh, the uh, entries using an opened only structure, Shanrai. So, 
what are the blockchain main characteristics? So, uh, of course, that is the decentralization, transparency and traceability of data, data immutability, real-time information, control mechanisms, so access to the, for example, permission at networks is restricted to identified uh, users, security, and some other features. So if we look at, in the previous slides, we see that the blockchain actually has a lot of characteristics that tax administration could uh, and should use uh, to provide better services to the taxpayers and uh, uh, to provide the timely collect uh, the taxes. So this is something that is uh, uh, really have to uh, uh, testing and uh, analyzing. And it is, uh, it is uh, in many tax administration is a pilot project and in some tax administra administration is in Thailand, it really works. So what is the types and modifications of the blockchain? So public blockchain, Anyone can participate as users, fully decentralized and actually an open source. Private permission blockchain, more centralized. Uh, participants need consent to join the networks and transactions are only available to them. And consortium blockchain, some information can be private. So if you look at that, um, uh, we can conclude that permission and then especially consortium blockchain can be suitable choice for tax administrations. So blockchain is not solution for every area in the tax administration or for any, any uh, work in the tax administration, but could be useful for uh, uh, many tax uh, areas in the tax administration and for tax processes. And so we have to look at in this permission net and consortium blockchain. But modification of the blockchain is always an open possibility for the tax administration. So we know that uh, blockchain technology has a consensus mechanism, which is the heart of the blockchain. Uh, and uh, for example, we can have uh, proof of stake, proof of uh, work, um, proof of capacity, proof of elapsed of time, um, a proof of activity, but proof of identity is uh, something that is very important for the tax authority. So anonymity is not an option in tax matters. Taxpayers connect, uh, cannot be anonymous when remitting taxes. So we have divided anonymity from privacy. That's two different things. And uh, of course, uh, we can modify the blockchain so we see uh, uh, for example, three main types of the blockchain, so it could be hybrid also. So uh, that we can actually modif uh, uh, make a modification of the blockchain for the needs uh, that we really need for our purposes. So that's, that's possible. Uh, and if we are talking about anonymity, anonymity is always something that is characteristics of the cryptocurrencies and uh, uh, cryptocurrencies we connect with the blockchain, but actually it is uh, a much more important thing. And first, in this situation, proof of identity uh, has to be uh, assured that the uh, Smart contract is another thing that is very important in this story about uh, the blockchain. So uh, this is set of rules between involved parties. This is actually the computer uh, uh, code uh, which are running on the top of the blockchain and turn legal obligations into automated uh, process. Uh, like a, as is this picture, like a cryptographic box that contains value and only unlocks if certain conditions are met. And we see there is not intermediaries. So smart contracts is very important part in the system of the blockchain. Uh, if we use that, especially for the uh, for any purposes and especially for, for the tax purposes, but uh, could bring us a lot of uh, benefit, benefits. So um, 
if we look, for example, what are the pot uh, this is some what are the potential text areas for the blockchain? Is uh, storing data, for example, could be about certain trans transactions, for example, taxpayers um, uh, register of land own owner and other property properties and so on. This is secure methods, for example, could be using for registering uh, taxpayers and verifying the authenticity of the taxpayers. There is the uh, potential for increasing compliance. Uh, for example, we can have the compliance rules in the smart contracts, uh, which will reduce the cost and creating actually the trust in the tax administration. Of course, uh, it's a lot of uh, uh, possibilities in the area of uh, VAT as uh, payments or refunds or VAT uh, fraud. But this is not the only tax area where the blockchain and DLT technology can be useful, can be useful in the field of transfer pricing, for example. So we, we have, for example, tra uh, smart contracts. So we have, we can put all the methods uh, five or six methods in this uh, 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 smart contract. Uh, there is employment tax. This is tax audit area. So if we can uh, exchange the real time information, which are immutable and so on and so on. So for tax audit, this is very something that uh, brings new opportunities. Uh, but if we, we are talking of the blockchain, so as I said, or DLT, we have to be very uh, caution so, and see which, uh, what benefits we can have from these technologies. For example, uh, the first uh, real-time exchange information between tax authorities was actually last year, I think in summer between Estonia and Finland, on X-Road. This is not a blockchain. Uh, so other possibilities are is possible. So we have to decide which are really good and have benefits for the tax administration and uh, uh, and also for the taxpayers. So we have not to forget our services to the taxpayers and minimize the uh, the administrative uh, burden uh, for the uh, for the taxpayers. So. Uh, this is a uh, uh, two examples of uh, in the field of uh, VAT. So this is a very simple one. So we must based on blockchain via smart contract calculation of VAT, and the payment is forwarded uh, directly to the uh, tax administration and the rest of the amount to the supplier. For example, in the real time, no or minimum uh, errors. So we can. Uh, for example, use that. Uh, but I like this initial concept of the VAT coin, uh, which was introduced by Richard Ainsford and other authors in paper VAT coin, the GCC cryptocurrency. It was designed as a proposal for the GCC uh, Gulf Cooperation Council. The most important goal is to prevent tax frauds and collection of taxes in real time. So it's actually uh, paying the taxes by coin issued by government. So uh, if we are talking about the fraud, for example, it is the cross border. So for the countries of uh, GCC, and uh, if we are talking about uh, paying the taxes by coin, uh, uh, which only purpose is paying uh, the taxes. So the fraud is minimizing because I don't know who will like to steal the coins for for that uh, uh, besides the money so uh, so it's it's a really great concept and um, i have one uh, one uh, article about that can we apply wider as a tax coin so that all for example in european union taxes uh, can be paid with the tax coin as the as a vat for example so this is something that really fascinating me. Of course, the base, the base is the blockchain technology. So this is something that is really, uh, really unusual. 
So we see today, if we are talking about uh, VFT examples and other examples in the field of taxation uh, for using blockchain technology and DLT technology, we see a, a lot of things. For example, uh, as I said, in Thailand, it works for VAT, what we found uh, for tourists. Uh, and uh, we have uh, in Europe uh, uh, some pilots in Germany and, uh, of course, in, in Estonia, K, uh, KSI. Uh, type of blockchain and in many other countries and in LATAM. So we see that every tax administration actually uh, try to uh, testing or have enforced something based on new technologies. And the aim is to use this benefit uh, from these technologies, uh, as I said in my uh, second slide, uh, to fulfill what we actually need in tax administration. So, uh, my short conclusions today will be that paradigm between legislation and technology has already shifted. What does it mean? So, uh, it was uh, uh, always the rule that uh, technology follow legislation. But today, this is not acceptable anymore. So, legislation and technology has to be compatible. And sometimes in the future, and right now, I'm sure that we will have situation that technology will have direct impact on the legislation on provisions in the law. Why is that? We don't want the law which is not applicable or very costly for the taxpayers or the, or the tax authorities. So we have to have in mind that technology is very important uh, part in the lawmaking, especially uh, tax law. So uh, this is something that uh, really could uh, be useful and helpful, helpful for us. If we don't pay uh, attention on technology, just on the uh, on the on the law part, uh, it it cannot be the good results today in the digital era. So this is very very connected and should be compatible. We see these slight tensions between blockchain and GDPR, for example. So this is something that should be avoided in the future. So every tax monitor, analyze, and test uh, new technologies in order to make quality solutions solely for priority. This is an imperative. However, it is clear that new technologies such as blockchain and DLT can provide in certain segments better communications with uh, tax administrations. Immuta immutability data, use of smart contracts, real-time data are just some of the benefits. Considering the tax administration communicate with a huge amount of data, attention to the selection uh, and implementation of new technologies is of particular importance. In addition, new technologies also contain certain disadvantages, but this should not be a reason for a priority withdrawal. High quality analysis and studies can provide the best solutions for the digital era. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you hear me <laughs> hear, uh, yes. hear me well. So uh, it was uh, uh, my presentation uh, about uh, a short presentation about the blockchain, but I think that I uh, emphasize uh, what is uh, really important for the tax administration and how uh, how we can have the benefits from the blockchain or DLT technologies and also from machine learning, artificial intelligence or Internet of Things. So this is a, a, a lot of possibilities. So thank you very much. Mm, good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, to the CEU University and all the organizers for having me here today. I'm going to talk about the use of blockchain by tax administration, particularly the use of this technology in VAT fraud. Well, uh, we have had a, a great introduction, um, and uh, I'm going to, to explain, to explain uh, a remark uh, certain things about the blockchain technology, but uh, this already has been explained. Uh, secondly, I'm going to speak about the VAT fraud. Uh, the, ne, then I'm going to speak about the proposals to use the blockchain to mitigate the VAT fraud, especially in the EU. And, and finally, I'm going to speak about some conclusions. Well, 
blockchain technology. Well, uh, the blockchain technology is uh, behind of the Bitcoin. Blockchain technology is a software protocol based on cryptography. It's also a distributed system. The data is copied in the computers of all the transactional participants. The information is stored in blocks. The blocks are fully identifiable and they are linked to the previous data block. In this manner, the, inform the information is stored in chains of block. The technology is uh, trustworthy because it uses four key components, distributed ledger, trust, share, and smart contracts. Well, uh, according with the European uh, Commission, the EU countries lost 140 billion euro in VAT revenues in 2008. The VAT gap in 2009 was estimated in 134 billion of euros. And the potential for the loss of the VAT in 2020 is calculated in 164 billion of euros due to the effects of the coronavirus pandemic on the economy. Well, this is a big problem in the, in the EU. So we, we are going to explore the proposals to address this problem uh, and uh, see if, if it's, it's possible to implement blockchain uh, in this solution. Well, the most uh, popular or the most uh, 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 popular fraud uh, is carousel fraud. It's also is known as a missing trader, as a missing trader intra-community fraud. There is a similar fraud in an extra community operations known as a missing trader extra community fraud. Let me explain how, how the carousel fraud works. It's a company named B, resident in the, in the EU member state, two buys a supply from the company A, resident in the EU member state one. It pays 0% VAT rate. On another hand, if the company B resells the supply to another trader, company C has to pay the VAT. Uh, for example, in Spain, the VAT rate is 20%. The company V must collect the VAT and, uh, and must to pay it to the tax office. But the company V does not file the a return. And before that the tax administration realizes, the company V disappears. That is why this fraud is called the missing trader. Then the company C resell the supply to another uh, uh, to, to another uh, client in the in the EU member state one to the rate of, of zero percent VAT. Then uh, the, the the buyer and the reseller ask for the return to the tax office. Uh, uh, for the reform of, uh, of the 20% of the VAT. And the, the good is, uh, is mostly on paper in the EU member one. And all again start, uh, start once and again and again. This is why this uh, fraud is called also the carousel fraud. Well, now let me uh, explain how uh, is, is uh, possible to implement the blockchain technology. The proposal uh, suggests to implement in the first place the digital invoice custom exchange. This means that the dig dig digital invoice, um, this digital invoice replaces uh, the paper invoices with electronic invoices. First, the seller generates an electronic uh, file. We have a, we we are seeing the same the same uh, carousel probe. We are going to to imagine all the solution in this uh, scheme. 
In, in this uh, scheme, the, the seller generates an electronic file and all the, with all the details of the transaction. The seller digital signs uh, this uh, file uh, digitally and then uh, transmit uh, this information to the origin tax administration. The tax administration have to authorize the use of this uh, proforma. Then the origin administration checks the file and if the file is complete, the administration saves a copy and sign it. The electronic signature serves uh, as an access key and the document becomes a part of the shared layer because the, because the origin tax administration send the file and the key uh, to the destination tax administration and to the seller. In this manner, uh, the, the, these three parts has the same uh, file. After, the seller transmit the proposal invoice to the buyer. And the buyer can use the access key to check the, the information of the pro forma and, um, and valid, valid this invoice. The, the, boy, the, the buyers then replicate the same steps uh, previously uh, that uh, previously did the seller. This means that send the file to the tax administration, tax administration check if the information is correct, and after uh, produce um, a, a, a file with a signature, with a second key. If the documents match, if the information that received that the destination tax administration is according with the information that received the origin tax administration, uh, then uh, send the, the final uh, invoice to the ta origin tax administration and the, and, and the budget and produce a second key. If the file uh, and, and simultaneously, uh, is a, a, the buyer creates a final, prof, a, fi a final invoice and send this invoice to the seller with uh, with the two keys, case with the two case. In this manner, all the participants has the same information, and uh, this document is unchangeable. Well, now we are, we are going to see how the blockchain uh, is applicable at, uh, under these uh, first uh, steps for, uh, the, for make uh, a digital invoice. And do you remember the characteristics of the blockchain? Well, we here. Well, first we need a distributed ledger uh, that is unchangeable. Well, as, uh, as the previous speaker has said, uh, we need a, a private uh, distributed ledger uh, for security reasons. The tax administration have to use a private uh, um, a distributed ledger instead of use a public distributed ledger like uh, Bitcoin because uh, in the public uh, distributed ledger, anyone can enter and see all the operations. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's necessary that uh, to keep the privacy and the information only between the tax administration and the taxpayer uh, to, um, to perform the blockchain in a private distributed ledger. Well, now, we, we have the same, the same operation. The seller and the buyer produce the digital invoice. But in, in this, case, in, in this uh, scenario, the seller and the buyer transmit the, the, the invoice at the same time uh, to the, with the same information 
uh, to the tax administration and to the origin tax administration and to the destination tax administration. Then the tax administration send them to the, to the iCloud and uh, start to perform the validation with the notes. The notes here uh, have to review the, all, the, all the information and solve a mathematical puzzle in order to, to see if the, all the information received is, uh, is okay. If they agree, if there are consensus uh, between the nodes of the uh, EU member state one and the EU member state two, they um, give a, a consensus. Uh, the, the proposed consensus is in 75%. So if is a, there is a 75 uh, consensus to approve the operation, then the invoice will be stored in a, in a chain automatically and it will be in the distributed layer. And all the parts have uh, the same information in the real time uh, of, of this invoice with all the, the data. It suggested uh, that uh, the nodes can perform this operation also with artificial intelligence. This is a huge uh, uh, potential for the tax administration, but also implies some risks for, for the taxpayers, uh, uh, for the taxpayers' rights. Because uh, the, the tax administration have a lot of information, so these nodes can perform this, uh, this, uh, this information, the information that was sent for the seller and the buyer, and uh, the tax administration can compare in seconds to, with the information that the tax administration has in his records. If, uh, if, if this uh, artificial intelligence uh, find uh, some anomaly, anomaly they, they can deny the, the production of the digital invoice. And, and, and also, it is, it's not going to be possible to create this invoice in, in a blockchain. So this is a, an, an, important, if, uh, an important issue if, you, if, the, if the traders uh, do a lot of uh, sales and a lot of operation, uh, imagine uh, that uh, one uh, artificial intelligence system block the possibility to, to uh, operate uh, because uh, the records uh, of the tax administration don't match with the, with the information, with, uh, with the information that supply the, the, the seller of the buyer. So this is, a, this is the, the, the one of the risks of this use, but it's a tremendous use. Also suggested that as the blockchain can record all the operation, it's, most, it's possible to, uh, to make a change from every step of the, of, the, of the market, of the chain of the market. It's possible to to make a, a blockchain or to yes a, to to store in blockchain the, the information of the manufacturer to the seller to the buyer and until the final buyer and in this manner all the information of all the uh, uh, all the operation can be stored in the chain and in, in the distributed ledger in this in this way the the artificial intelligence or the validation uh, in the artificial intelligence to perform the validation of the operation can use all the inform information available uh, of this operation or, or even is suggested that uh, the artificial intelligence can, can uh, compare this uh, operation with similar operation in the market. And and detect some uh, problems or some inconsistencies. So this is a very, very powerful technology. Also, it's possible to use smart contracts. 
as, as the, the previous speaker has said, the smart contracts are also very, very useful in blockchain because uh, these uh, small programs can, automat can automatically pay the VAT. This is, um, for example, when the seller send the, 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 the supply to the buyer, and when the supplier sell to the other buyer in the same EU member state, the smart contract automatically uh, can uh, collect the, the VAT and pay it to the destination tax administration uh, automatically. In this, in this uh, manner, it's not possible to, for the buyer to keep the VAT because uh, when, when, the, when the buyer generates the second, um, uh, the second uh, pro forma, uh, the tax administration is, is going to know that uh, the, the VAT is, is generated. So in this manner, the smart contract can, uh, or, can order to, to collect automatically the VAT and pay to the destination tax administration. Also, this smart contract is possible to use for reform uh, for refund the VAT. Here, um, in this uh, step, we can use also the the VAT um, coin that uh, that also has been men mentioned. Uh, instead of uh, instruct uh, the pay to pay with the with the money with the normal money, it's possible that the with the smart contract uh, collect the the VAT with the uh, uh, cryptocurrency, the uh, name tax tax coin or VAT coin, and uh, pay it to the destination tax administration. Later in the in the presentation, we are going to, to explore the characteristics of this uh, VAT coin. Alma, you have uh, five minutes, no more, because we we are already behind of the sketch of the. Ah yes, thank you very much. Well, uh, this is the the characteristics of Bitcoin. It's uh, the VAT must pay only in Bitcoin. Automatic payments uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the smart contracts. Uh, this uh, Bitcoin is convertible on, into cash only by governments. The traders will do no longer own the VAT as a real money. If the Bitcoin is stolen, it will be cancelled. So there are some advantages in this. Well, this is another another proposal to solve this uh, tax fraud. That is uh, the split payment mechanism that is also implemented in some uh, EU and non EU countries. And uh, this uh, split payment can use the blockchain technology, and the VAT payment can ma be made through the smart contracts. Well, some conclusion. Um, the blockchain is a powerful technology that can solve the tax fraud in the EU. The bad coin that, uh, can be used as an exclusive form of payment for the VAT. The blockchain uh, implementation in tax administration requ requires uh, important investment. The cost manage is uh, also uh, high. So the government have to uh, make a, a cost assessment to see if the uh, if is if is uh, if is uh, possible to implement this technology according with the VAT gap to the with the numbers on the VAT gap. Uh, since our pers perspective, I think is uh, worthy to implement this kind of technology uh, in the at least in the first stage of the. Um, electronic uh, invoice. The legal framework of VAT must be obtained, take, taking in consideration the taxpayer rights. The main concerns in this in this uh, area is um, is about uh, the implementation of the blockchain in in protection of protection of personal and data privacy. In a permissioning blockchain, there are, there are no anonymity. 
This means that each part in the network can see the information of all the participants. There are proposals that solve uh, this issue. For example, it has been suggested to protect the personal data with en encryption, such as zero knowledge proof. The, news, the nodes use the zero knowledge proof uh, to process the information and then generates the blockchain without disclosing the personal data with all the users. Nevertheless, uh, since our perspective, the issue has not been completely resolved. Uh, the immunability of the blockchain uh, made difficult to self-correction of tax returns for the taxpayers, as well as any modification of the information reported, and this issue also needs to be addressed. Finally, within uh, if tax administration use e intelligent artificial with blockchain, uh, this, uh, this uh, technology also uh, must fulfill the EU uh, ethical principles. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. I am, I am very happy to answer any question from you.